panel and you can chat on the chat panel and we'll answer the questions at the very end of the presentation. And so without further ado, I'd like to uh, hand the presentation over to our presenters who are Monty Letiolet and Jackie McElroy. All right, well, thank you, Mark. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to our little corner of the internet. This webinar is based on a session from ODTUG K-Scope 18 this past June in Orlando, Florida. Uh, many of you on the call probably attended K-Scope. Uh, there may be some of you on the call that actually attended the session. Uh, the response was very strong, and we decided to rebroadcast this content uh, as, a, as a webinar. I think the big reason the reaction to the session was so strong is that you know we all like to save money. Uh, departmental budgets are continually under pressure, uh, constantly under stress. So, so this webinar is going to show us all how to keep more of your money and how to make your budget dollar go just a little bit farther. So what ground are we going to cover this afternoon? Well, I guess there is truth in advertising because looking at the webinar title, low code, low cost BI with Oracle Apex and Analytic Views, that's exactly what we plan on covering. First, we're going to explain a term that you may have heard, and that's low code. It's, it's pretty popular these days. And then we're going to introduce Oracle Application Express and what it brings to the table. We're going to discuss analytic views, which I expect will be new information to most of you as it's new to the uh, Oracle database 12.2. Uh, and what about low cost? Well, see, that's in the title right there. Uh, both Apex and analytic views are available as no cost features of the Oracle database. And then finally, because seeing is believing, we'll spend the balance of the time showing a working Apex application demo app, and it will be very, very impressive to you, I'm sure. Now, the way this session came to be is, it, it's my experience that while there are some some very impressive full-featured BI solutions out there, uh, we know who they are, uh, Oracle and non-Oracle, uh, not only can they be incredibly expensive, uh, incredibly complex, but even worse is many companies aren't fully leveraging these solutions. So I ask you, why pay for something you're not using? Why not keep everything in the same stack? And why be forced to uh, integrate a third party tool? There is a better way. Uh, they may have amazing functionality, but in my mind, uh, to my way of thinking, it's overkill. Uh, they don't need all that functionality, they don't use it. Think about it, if you have a fly in your house, uh, a shotgun, May, may solve the problem, but a fly swatter may make more sense, at least it does to me. And need I remind you the fly swatter is much less expensive. And I also want to make clear before we begin that we, we're Apex experts, Oracle Application Express experts. We're not BI experts, but Apex and Analytic Views let you play quite successfully in the BI space. Uh, also, I wouldn't really consider this to be an Apex session. Uh, those of you on the call, there's not a whole lot new or innovative from the Apex perspective. Uh, with what you're going to see today, Apex is basically the presentation layer. Uh, Apex and some Oracle Jet. The back end is querying the analytic views, which is where the wow comes from. Okay, so let's begin. I'm joined this afternoon by my good friend, Jackie McElroy. She's one of the nicest, most engaging people I know, and one of the smartest. So, uh, Jackie, uh, would you like to introduce yourself here real quick? Sure, thanks, Monty. Um, my name's Jackie McElroy. I'm an Apex Programmer Analyst here at INSUM. I also am co-organizer of the Dallas-Fort Worth Apex Meetup Group. So if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I would love it if you came out and said hi at our next get together. Um, you can find me on Twitter, uh, email me, of course. I run an Oracle Apex-related blog. Um, I'd love for you to check out. And I've been doing Apex since uh, 2006. Okay. Very good, Jackie. This is me. Uh, I've been doing this for an awful long time, 32 years. 
that's painful. Uh, I am an orc lace in the area of database development, which means I've consumed copious amounts of the Oracle Kool-Aid, gallons and gallons. Uh, most of my time has been spent with ODTUG, and I had the privilege of serving as uh, the president and serving on the board uh, up until 2016. I still maintain very strong friendships over there. Uh, I would encourage everyone uh, who is interested in database development and web development, certainly in Application Express, to attend the ODTUG K-Scope conference. It's a traveling conference and it's uh, different locations every year. Last year was in Orlando, Florida, I mentioned. Next year is going to be in Seattle, Washington in June. Uh, June June's a, bit, a great time to be in Seattle. It's certainly going to be more comfortable than it will be in June here in Houston. I um, also encourage you to join the Latchley Nation and follow me on Twitter. And I also author a blog that for some reason has just taken off in India. And so we're proud of that. I want to take a quick second too. Uh, I, I try to do this on a lot of my uh, presentations and that's to encourage uh, yourselves uh, to, to, to blog and to speak and to give back to the community, the uh, Oracle community. Uh, then, you know, some people call it paying it forward. It's very, very important. Uh, everyone on this call has a story to tell. Uh, don't think for a second that uh, just because you know something, everybody knows it. It's simply not true. Um, there are people entering the Oracle database community each and every day. And in fact, some of the more basic things I've written are some of the more popular. And that's because it, it's a, there's a larger audience there. You know, if I start doing something that is uh, so technical, so advanced that the audience is the audience can be very small. So start blogging, start presenting. Uh, it's very important that we maintain a pipeline of experts. And if you are the expert, you actually benefit because unless you can explain things um, to someone else, you really don't have the depth of knowledge that you really need. So I'm going to step down off of that soapbox and we shall proceed. If you're doing anything, 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 anything with Oracle Apex, you're familiar with Insum Solutions. Uh, we were founded in 2002, actually uh, before Apex itself or HTML DB was formed and we are a gold partner. Uh, we have offices in North and South America. Uh, we've recently announced some strategic partnerships in Europe, and we have hundreds. In fact, we're approaching a thousand successful Apex projects uh, to our credit. So if you're interested in implementing some of the things you're going to see here today, uh, make your first call in some solutions. Um, we have uh, almost 100 employees. Uh, we're going to double the size of the company in the next two years. Um, we are stocked with uh, Oracle Aces, Oracle Ace directors, and Apex certified resources. Um, we're inter internationally recognized uh, for the methodology and the expertise that we put out. And also this past year, we were recognized by Deloitte as one of the top 500 fastest growing tech companies in North America. We're extremely proud of that. Uh, true story, very briefly, I found out about the Deloitte ranking uh, secondhand. Uh, someone called me outside of the company. And so I immediately called in, in some and I said, hey, did y'all know about this ranking? Uh, and they said, yeah, we knew about it. And I said, well, why aren't we shouting this out from the rooftops? And they said, well, it's not like we were number one. And so they're so modest. That's what I love about them. I had to convince them that making Deloitte's list was a very big deal. Hell, making it anywhere on the list is a huge accomplishment and should be celebrated. So what is low code? You hear a lot of talk about low code, low code. What is it? Well, the definition that I prefer is that low code is the, the sweet spot between high productivity and high control. And they, they basically work, I guess you could say against each other because presumably to get more of one, you must give up some of the other. And the thing I love about Apex is that you know, it sits comfortably between no code and full control. See, the key in all cases is to use as much as much code as is needed to satisfy the requirements. And the the beauty of Apex is that there are no code features, like the ability to import from Excel. And on the other end of the spectrum is full control where you can you can code to your heart's content. 
but let me caution you more code is more bugs in every case more code uh, is more bugs so you really don't want to allow the pendulum to swing too far in that direction Here's another graphic that may help things to clarify a little bit. Uh, no code is is where you're allowed to make simple preordained uh, se selections. Um, you really don't have much uh, much to do except maybe a few check boxes, that kind of stuff. Uh, low code, you can create your own SQL statements um, that you would base a report or perhaps a visualization on. There is uh, more, more uh, you have more control, obviously. And then high code is uh, nerdvana. <laughs> There's a new word for you, nerdvana. Hundreds and thousands of lines of code. Code away to your heart's content. Uh, reams of paper. Kill some trees. But we don't want to go that far. We want to keep it to low code, high productivity. And what, is, what did we say earlier? More code is more bugs. So let's introduce Oracle Application Express. Oracle Application Express or better known as Apex, is Oracle's RAD tool. It's built into every Oracle database and it allows you to quickly generate functioning applications with very little coding. Um, the advanced features uh, can be used to build very robust, very complex, and highly scalable applications. Um, the applications that you create using Oracle Application Express are fully supported, uh, whether on-prem or on the cloud. And it is basically uh, in some primary application development tool. Uh, way back in the day, uh, I'd say in the early aughts when Apex hit the scene, uh, it was perceived to be good for small departmental apps, uh, simple CRUD apps, uh, and that's simply because it excelled in that area. But since then, it's been disproven time and time again. Uh, Apex is 100% enterprise capable. It's wild, widely used uh, within the public sector. Um, you see great adoption within higher ed. And so if you are considering Apex and you need some industry references, uh, we're more than happy to provide those as well as Oracle is. Uh, Oracle itself, I should mention, uh, really runs on Apex. There is uh, 166,000 Apex applications running inside of Oracle and uh, requiring over a billion page views per year. Uh, because it lives in the Oracle database, it is very tightly integrated. It scales with the database. And as soon as a database feature becomes available, it automatically instantly becomes available to Apex. Um, it's been described as, as a thin veneer over the DB and your overhead is almost non-existent. Some common uses of Application Express are custom web applications, uh, desktop or mobile, everything from small opportunistic apps up through enterprise-wide solutions. A significant part of our business is also extending ERPs like Oracle EBS. Um, we can do the same thing with uh, Banner or PeopleSoft. If you're currently maintaining your own extensions, uh, then let us uh, reach out to us because there is a better way using Application Express. And finally, Application Express uh, provides us what I call a soft place to land for Oracle Forms customers. If your customers are demanding a better user experience, Apex is the best direction to go. You can reuse all of your packaged business logic you currently maintain. Uh, it's SQL and, and PL SQL based, just like Forms. So you're not looking to bring in another skill set and your forms developers uh, can be instantly productive with little to no training. So if you have forms in house or if your organization has a, an insatiable appetite for spreadsheets, uh, reach out to us. You need to give Apex a look. And if you're using uh, Discover, uh, you should know it's been sunsetted. It's reached its end of life. It's not being um, updated in any way from Oracle. And uh, I mentioned to a Discover customer that he's not enjoying any Oracle support. Uh, and he replied, he's never enjoyed Oracle support at all, which makes, <laughs> he made a good point. But if you're using Oracle Discover and you're looking to return to a supported solution, uh, we have a utility that is the, the closest thing I've seen to a silver bullet 
and we've automatically convert individual worksheets to Apex interactive reports, and we can do it in hours and days rather than weeks or months. One of the biggest contributors to the success of Apex is the community it, itself. Uh, it's like no other. Uh, there's a, a spirit of, of camaraderie that begins with the Apex development team itself. Uh, Mike Hitchwa of Oracle, Joel Kahn, and David Peake, they, they work unselfishly to promote Apex. And if you were at K-Scope, you got to meet the Apex dev team. If you were at our vendor presentation, you were able to meet most of them there. Uh, they're a great bunch of people, and I hope you've had I uh, hope you have an opportunity to uh, get to know them at some point. Uh, Apex is not some fly-by-night flavor of the month solution. Um, it was born in 2004 and is in active development. And uh, compare that time frame to your JavaScript framework du jour. It doesn't compare. With tremendous features are added with every release. Um, the latest release is, of Apex is, is Apex 18.1, which dropped about six weeks ago. Um, don't worry, I'm not about to read this slide. I just wanted to include it um, in the slide deck for future reference for you guys. Okay, analytic views, the reason most of you are here. I actually got into analytic views uh, last year. I was at Open World and I sat in a session by Bud Indress who is responsible for OLAP and in-memory databases at Oracle. And I was blown away. Um, I'm an old school SQL guy, so this idea of leveraging the database and pulling things out of the application layer really, really appeals to me. So after the open world presentation, I reached out to Bud and he graciously allowed us to use his demonstration app uh, that they developed. Um, We'll get to that later in the webinar, but it is very, very, very impressive. So simply put, analytic views layer a hierarchy and dimensional model over your data. Uh, it provides an easy way to create queries of, of data stored in your existing uh, database tables and views, or better yet, if you maintain a star schema, um, it's not mandatory that your data exists in a star schema, but analytic views play very well within such structures. So the anal analytic views um, organize data using a dimensional model. Um, are they, how are they uh, similar to, to a standard relational view? Um, they are, they're metadata objects, so there's no data stored within the analytic view. Uh, you can access the analytic views using SQL, just like you can a standard view. And you can access data from other database objects, like a standardized view, uh, such as tables, views, um, external tables. And you can join multiple tables into a single view, just like you would uh, with one of the standard relational views. Now, the definition of an analytic view, which we'll get into in a minute, is you've got your 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 select statement, your navigation, you've got your join, you've got aggregations and calculations. Um, and so because we're putting these in the view definition, we're not having to include these in the SQL that you're using in your queries or your visualization. So rather than having simple tables and complex select statements, you can use simple, simple, simple SQL to query these what I call smart analytic views. And this approach has has several obvious benefits. Um, it's simple and faster to to develop your applications. And it's much easier to define calculations within these views, uh, within these analytic views, than it is to write or or generate these complex SQL statements that will then just be proliferated throughout your app. Let's keep it all in one place, single point of definition. Uh, these calculations uh, will be defined once and then just reused by everything uh, in your application. It's in the database, so it's, you can use them across any number of applications. Now, with analytic views, there's three uh, component objects that enable uh, analytic view functionality. You need to be familiar with dimensions, hierarchies, and the analytic view definition itself. The 
attribute dimension is the metadata object that references the tables and views and organizes these columns into these higher level objects such as your your attributes and your levels if you're a bi person this is start going to start to make really uh, clear sense to you uh, an example of a geography dimension would be where country rolls up to census division uh, which then rolls up to state which then rolls up to county now hierarchies are a type of view think of hierarchies as the view of the dimensional data and it's important because these hierarchies are how we join to the the fact table as we'll see in just a little bit analytic views are the type of view that presents fact data referencing both fact tables and hierarchies so both hierarchy and measure data is selected as part of the analytic view definition and here's a graphic that it's simple but it shows the journey from your data uh, to your presentation using uh, analytic views so in preparation for this presentation we considered only analytic views based on oracle tables but should your environment and should your needs include non-oracle data sources uh, you can still reference them through an analytic view now it, it's really not difficult to to start using analytic views um, it's not something you're going to outgrow uh, these SQL uh, syntax diagrams are something that um, that we all should be familiar with if you're familiar with any of the Oracle documentation but as we start to expand as we start to expand the the, uh, the SQL syntax uh, you'll see that there's much more here than meets the eye Not exactly low code, is it? There is a better way, and that is to use uh, Oracle's SQL IDE, uh, SQL Developer. Um, like Oracle Apex and like Analytic Views, it's also free, which is very nice. For those unfamiliar uh, with SQL Developer, it's an integrated development environment that allows you to create and maintain your, your database objects. It's similar to Toad or, or SQL Navigator. Um, now, once you download SQL Developer and connect it to your database, uh, which is outside the scope of this presentation, uh, just right click on the Analytic View tree node and ask for the quick analytic view. And so then you're asked to pick a table and then the wizard will then identify and model some of your dimension keys, your measures, and your attribute dimensions. It does it automatically. And I can, of course, change any of the, the guesses that the wizard made that may or may not have been uh, spot on. I can make changes here. And there's the generated DDL. Now, the, the quick analytic view, uh, it does a, a pretty good job. Uh, it's my experience that it gets you about 90% there. Uh, it obviously depends on the, the table structures that it's working against. But uh, in in most cases, I still need to go in there and tweak the resulting scripts. But it is a huge time saver. And uh, I would certainly recommend using the uh, quick analytic view rather than going in and uh, coding everything from scratch. All right, since we're uh, pressed for time, let's let's look a little bit closer at the analytic view definition. All right, the using part that I've highlighted there, that's basically your fact table or your view that is used for your analytic view. Again, if you're a BI uh, expert, this is all gonna be terms that are pretty familiar to you. All right, dimension by, all the dimensions that are referred, that are referenced rather, in the analytic view must be defined here. It's very important. Now, the uh, to create the dimensions, there's a create attribute dimension uh, command that you would go in and create those objects. Uh, don't know. I didn't put one in the uh, in the in the uh, slide here, but I will include one uh, in the notes. Uh, key references. This is how we're joining the dimension to the fact table. 
hierarchies. For each dimension, there's a, one or more hierarchies referenced, and these hierarchy objects are defined in a create hierarchy command. Uh, I did include one of those, and this is where you are able to identify that uh, county is a, a child of, there it is, a child of state, and which is a child of the country. So this is the hierarchy definition. Now measures, measures are um, the, the, are defined here. They can be from the fact table or they can be calculations. Um, an example of a measure or a calculation would be perhaps if you wanted to display something like prior month, uh, that would be an example. Measures uh, also are the individual columns that you'll be specifying in your query statements. We'll see here shortly. And uh, yeah, I included a measure here. So you can see uh, in this case, uh, we've identified three measures. One of them is just simply a sum of the population. The one in the middle is a sum of the number of insured in the population. And the, the final one at the bottom is the number of uninsured uh, that we are summing. Now that, we've have, now that we have that in the analytic view uh, definition, whenever we're using the analytic view in our visualizations, all we have to do is reference num insured. All we have to do is reference num uninsured. All the logic, all the complexity has been pushed into the analytic view definition. Now that the analytic view is created, I mentioned how easy the, the SQL is uh, required to, to, to query. It becomes very, very trivial. So fact data is selected from the analytic view using the SQL. So uninsured AV is our analytic view. Now we attach to it uh, the hierarchies that we're going to need. Now standardized columns from the hierarchy are like member name, a hierarchy order, um, but it's a very standard way of dealing with these hierarchies and you'll, very, you'll appreciate it once you start using analytic views. Now levels of aggregation are specified in the where clause. So where it says where the time is year and the level of geography is state, that's, that's the aggregation level. So if we wanted to change it, if we wanted to go by year, by county, see the graphic at the bottom of the screen there is by state, right? If we wanted to go by county, all we would do, and this is very, very powerful, all we do is change the geography level to county like that. That's the only change we've made to the SQL. Everything else remains the same. Now to select a calculation, uh, all you would do is change the select in the top where we have percent insured. If we wanted to show uh, population, then we would put num population in there and the select and we would see the, the map color-coded by population. If I wanted in this case to show percent insured differing from the US average, I simply put that measure, that calculated measure from the analytic view definition in my select clause. Very powerful. And you, feel, and you can see that the complexity is not in the visualization SQL any longer. The complexity has been pushed back into the analytic view definition. Okay, we're done with the boring part. Uh, we were able to give a quick explanation of what low code is. Uh, we were able to give a quick introduction to Insum and Oracle Application Express. We were very uh, quick, uh, we, we were able to quickly, um, very quickly hit the high points of some analytic views. Um, and we were, and now we're going to, um, to show you a real uh, working app, an Apex app that is querying these analytic views and providing some some really, really cool visualizations. Um, it's important to remember this is done using no cost features of the Oracle database. Oracle Application Express, free. Oracle Analytic Views, free. Oracle SQL Developer, free. So I'm going to now going to give uh, Jackie McElroy the helm and she's going to wow us with a demo. And uh, we, uh, we're going to shift this over to Jackie one second.
Let me give Jackie control here. While Monty is doing that, I, I would invite you, uh, everyone, to, uh, if you have the time, um, have a look at uh, insum.ca's website and check out our latest blog on uh, EBS and uh, how Apex is um, extremely helpful uh, for EBS in uh, many different uh, types of situations. Thank you. Okay, we're just about ready, Mark. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Let me turn my sharing off, and I think, Jackie, you'll be in good shape there. I think you just need to give me mouse control still. Okay, I think I did. I think okay. I just did. All right. about that. Now I just right. need the app. Okay. It is on my screen. <laughs> oh, there's my, I see it. All right, here we go. Let me turn off my PowerPoint and you should be in good shape. Awesome, thanks Monty. Okay, so now that Monty has told you a little bit about analytic views, the important thing that we wanna see is what can we do with those analytic views and how, how can we see the data that we have in our database? So this application is called um, Analytic View Express and it really quickly gets you acquainted with your data. So here on the home page, it's automatically going to see any analytic views that I have defined in my schema. Um, so I'm going to go into a workbook that I've already created, and we are going um, to see some visualizations um, that were created right on top of our analytic view, and all we had to do was um, to set a few parameters inside of our app. Uh, this first one is a pivot table. It's showing us the percentage of people that are without health insurance. It is by state and year. Um, you have full control to drill down into any of these states and go down a level. So if I'm at the state level with my analytic view in the where clause, um, basically I'm just changing the where clause here and we're seeing the county level. Um, we're going down one level. Um, we can get different abstractions of our data, so we can compare two years. So this chart is comparing um, 2008 um, insurance data with 2015 insurance data. Um, it's a little bit crazy with the colors, but um, it gives you an idea of what you can do. Uh, to, the, to the examples Monty used in his presentations, the map is really powerful. Um, this map is showing the percent of uninsured people uh, by state. Um, you have full control over your um, um, filters here. So you can, from the app, just decide that you want to see only the people between 250 and 400% of the poverty line, um, and it will, will change. You can filter by uh, gender, so I only want to. I'm only interested in uh, the male population, and I can change the year. Um, under I'm I'm interested in age 40 to 64. Um, you have, like I said, full control over this. So here, normally I would put a filter that says um, I want to see all years, um, and we can do that pretty quickly. Um, I want to see everyone. So I have full control to change how this looks and feels on the screen. And with that small change, I'm now able to see any age group for any level. And to, to, to traverse uh, your levels again, you can take that same map and view it by county, which is, I think, really impressive. Um, you're able to see uh, the different levels of the percent of uninsured people um, per county. 
um, and you can hover over, get the percentage. You can also change the filters at this, the same way I'd done before. Um, and this is all straight on top of your analytic views, um, just ch changing small things about a query um, on the fly here inside the application. And remind me, Jackie, how much did all this cost again? It, it was free, Monty. <laughs> it was free. Wow, that is very, that's very nice. It's all free. So uh, one thing I want to, oh, go ahead, Monty, did you? No, no, that was it. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to show you guys how this was made. So um, how easy it is to create visualizations on top of your analytic view, because this all looks pretty impressive right here. Um, but I, it, it's really um, impressive when you see how little effort it takes uh, to do some of this. So what I want to do is I want to go back out and actually walk through creating a visualization with you. Um, just a little bit about this homepage of, of Analytic View Express. You're able to group Analytic Views if you want to. My um, SAHI view here is stands for Small Area Health Insurance Health Insurance Estimates, and that is the the data that we've brought in um, and created the Analytic View on top of. So I've got my uh, SAHI uh, Analytic View here. Um, and any workbooks is, is the term that's used to kind of group your visualization, visualizations together. So um, I'm just going to create a new workbook here uh, so that we can go through the steps of creating a visualization. So it'll automatically try to kind of um, give you a first uh, step at creating something so you won't get just an empty screen when you come on here. Um, you here on the left hand side you've got your analytic view uh, that we're using so this is our small area health insurance view you've got your hierarchies um, that are defined inside this view and as as monty, monty mentioned um, these are the things your data varies by so our data in our um, our health insurance data varies by gender um, by geography by age by income and by time so that's all here. If you expand those out, um, you can see the different um, attributes of each hierarchy. Uh, you've also got your measures here. Those are the things that you calculated inside of your analytic view. So um, here, the one I'm going to concentrate on is the percent, of, percent uninsured, but you could select any measure you wanted to, um, to view um, in your visit, visualizations. Uh, the middle column here is where you kind of drag and drop uh, your hierarchies and measures in order to create uh, the visual visualization you want to see. So this first one, um, we're going to go ahead and keep with the pivot table. I just want to change it a little bit. Um, so right now it's given us percent uninsured, which is good. That's what I wanted. Um, and it's given us time. But I would rather, um, instead of seeing the, the data by age, I'd rather see the data um, by, uh, let's do geography. So I just remove age, and then I drag geography down into my row. And it's going to refresh for me on the right-hand side. And I've instantly got uh, my pivot table. Uh, by my geography. The cool thing about your um, hierarchy here is you can go into it and uh, customize it if you want to. So it automatically uh, defaulted to my level being state, but I can change this to anything I want. If I want um, to filter by a certain state, I can do that. Um, in, if I want to go to the county level, I can change that here. I can do a combination. I can um, do some logic and an or, different things together. Um, but by default, you're able to expand your pivot table here and go inside your state and go down the levels of your analytic view. So from here, from state, I can automatically drill down into uh, the county level. Jackie, how did you do the uh, coloring? The, the shading. 
Okay, so the coloring um, is actually built into the analytic view. There are measures, um, Monty talked about defining measures inside of your analytic view. You can actually define measures that uh, control the look and feel of your view. So like kind of define like CSS styles. So inside of um, Analytic View Express, you can also view um, the DDL for the analytic view. And I'll take you down um, inside of our view here. This one's a little bit complex, but once you get the hang of the syntax for analytic views, you can pretty much uh, follow a pattern to create any any analytic view. When I get down in here, we'll see the measures um, and we'll show you if I didn't pass them. Here we go. No, there it is. Yeah, so, so this percent uninsured CSS is a measure defined directly inside of the analytic view. And we've kind of arbitrarily defined that um, the different colors. So something um, Below 10% is kind of that the orangish reddish color. Something above 10% is good, so it's kind of the blue teal color. And then there's different variations on those colors depending on um, the value that's that's given for that measure. So we've automatically um, got that built in. So it, it makes it even easier to display something on the screen because you you got the CSS there. Um, ready for you. Does that answer your question, Monty? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's very nice. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I love the idea of pushing the complexity down below the fold. And here it is. You're, you're, you didn't mention any of the shading in your select statement. It's Correct. all brought in from the analytic view. Very powerful. So the other thing that you always want when you're inside of these things is the filter. Um, you want to give you want to be able to filter uh, on different things when you're um, inside of here. So that's really easy to do here too. So this page option here, all I can, all I need to do is I can, um, I can drag my hierarchies over into the page, and you'll see it refresh. And I've got automatically got a, um, a filter here. Um, it reads the analytic view. It knows what the values are and allows me to change my analytic view uh, right there on the fly or not my analytic view, my visualization right on the fly um, very easily. And I can add more than one. So I can add age here if I want to. I want uh, to be able to uh, maybe put that on. Um, I want to be able to filter by age and um, let's say income as well. If I can put it in the right spot. So, I mean, really easy, really slick. You get a, a, a very nice visualization that's totally responsive um, to the user. And it's already color-coded. Um, we can take that a step further. Um, and, I mean, pivot tables are nice, uh, but I really like the maps. So, in order to create a map, it's really simple. You just click the plus. Um, create a map and again it's going to kind of guess for you and give you um, some some default values but what I really want to do is um, I want to change my geography here um, I want to make sure what I have selected in my filter so um, we can have it set by state um, that's great but we want to show in our measures our percent uninsured. And let's fix our age filter here um, so that we can see everyone. We just go into the filter, set it to all, and then hopefully there. Um, and then let's see our geography here. We want to do states, and there we are. We've got a map uh, that shows our same percent uninsured, the same data that we saw on our pivot table. It's just 
shown a different way. Um, right now, I'm only filtering by age, but again, you just drag and drop these if you want to do gender. You can add that in here. Um, you know, and... I just thought of something too, Jackie. Is that uh, mm -hmm. is that this instantly becomes available to all your mobile customers as well, because it's a, a single code base uh, with Application Express will render on the desktop and on mobile platforms. Is that that's correct? Correct. Yes. It didn't like what I did with age, but um... Jackie and and Monty, uh, it's Mark. Um, I can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, so we've had a few questions concerning um, um, Oracle 12C Analytic View Express, and uh, people are um, a bit confused as to whether it's inside Apex or it's separate from Apex, um, or is it a feature of the Oracle 12C database, a new feature that that's come out. Um, uh, so just just to confirm that this what we're seeing here is not part of Apex. Uh, this is an Apex app, uh, ah. and the way the way you tell if you look at the URL, uh, you can see where it says um, it's got the IP, then it's got ORDs, and it's got slash f question mark p, and then it's you got your application, your page, your session ID all the way out. Uh, this is this is an Apex app. He makes use. Uh, this is the application that uh, Bud Endress uh, demoed at Open World, and it's uh, it makes use of Oracle Jet. And but this is in every way an Apex app. The um, as far as if it's available right now, uh, I I think you'll see uh, this Analytic View Express uh, be made available in one of the cloud offerings in the future. Um, but there's nothing stopping someone uh, from from going in, creating some analytic views, and then creating your own visualizations in Apex. Uh, there's there's nothing stopping you from coming in and and putting a, a presentation layer together just like this. It's all Apex. I think they've done a really slick job with it, and uh, I think they've done a fantastic job with the presentation. They've taken a, a lot of the um, the building, the dynamic building of the where clauses, the dynamic building of the select statements. They've already they made it part of this presentation, uh, and they've done a very good job at it. But there's nothing stopping stopping anyone uh, that is uh, versed in Apex from doing this themselves. We had a, another question concerning uh, whether this this application itself uh, is uh, is available somewhere. As we speak, I believe the answer is no. Uh, I, I kind of touched on it in my previous answer is I think you'll see this Analytic View Express uh, be made available through one of the the cloud offerings. But uh, as we speak, I think if you if you like what you see, uh, then then reach out um, and we we can we can uh, we can definitely build you something uh, to your tastes. Uh, but this. This application uh, that uh, Bud Indris and his team has put together, I do not believe it's available to the public just yet. Okay, thank you very much, Monty. And so, are there uh, other questions, Mark? Or uh, they basically were were centered around that uh, differentiating. Um, what we're seeing from uh, from Apex and uh, how it was built, and I think Monty, you answered that pretty clearly. Um, and where to get it? Um, uh, and the final question here I have uh, so far is: um, so is this something written inside Oracle? Uh, it's written by an Oracle internal team. Um, you know, I mentioned as part of my as part of my part of the presentation is uh, I reached out to reached out to Bud and, and he was uh, so gracious uh, in allowing us to, to utilize uh, this app. I think, it, I think it just does a wonderful job of, of making something simple, even simpler. Like uh, Jackie demonstrated, you know, you're just dragging a hierarchy over. You're just dragging a measure over. You're, you're building this filtering mechanism just by drag and drop. It, and, and then you're able to add uh, these drag or the um, drop down choices it's all configurable so i think they've done a wonderful job with it and that's one of the reasons why i was uh, so insistent on 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 
putting this into our presentation is because it really, really features the uh, the power of Apex and the power of analytic views in, in a way that I haven't seen elsewhere. But you know, we're using the, this Apex app as the presentation layer. There's nothing stopping someone from going, you know, that has 12.2 from going in and creating their own analytic views and having all this drill down capability, uh, you know, building it in your own app. It doesn't have to be Apex. I think Apex does does a great job and uh, with with the presentation, but you can use analytic views in your own Oracle development. There's absolutely nothing stopping someone from doing that. And that covers our questions so far. Well, one thing I'd like to close with too is uh, I mentioned uh, that Jackie and I are not BI uh, experts in any way. Um, anyway. <laughs> in any way. Yes, please do, do not con confuse us with BI experts. We're not. Um, we are versed in Apex, but here we just uh, were able uh, with, the, with the, uh, the, the union, with the marriage of Apex and analytic views, we're able to provide some pretty serious BI capabilities. And, you know, with because Apex is the presentation layer, if you then wanted to download the information uh, in an, you know, down to Excel, or if you wanted to, to um, push this information out to a PowerPoint or a Word document using some other uh, uh, third-party tools like Apex Office Print, this is just scratching the surface. But as you can tell, we, in, in very short order, we put together some pretty, uh, pretty incredible visualizations. Uh, I, I've got a soft spot for the for the drill downs from from you uh, from the country to the state to the county, because having done something like this in the past and having having written those uh, complex SQL queries against uh, against um, star schemas, it's so much easier. There's such an appreciation for these analytic views because. All you're doing is manipulating a where clause. All you're doing is manipulating the select uh, columns that you that you're referencing. It's very very easy. It's trivial when you look at um, at the SQL knowledge you need to use the analytic views once created. Is that uh, if that's all the questions? I can't believe we got out of here on time and under budget uh jackie thank you very <laughs> <Me much. either>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your uh participation and uh mark if you'd like to take us home please do thanks monty and thanks jackie uh it was, it was great to see all the, the very enthusiastic uh, questions just tumbling in about where is this what is this uh <laughs> where did it come from who did it <laughs> so obviously people are, are are really struck by how powerful uh the application is and and how uh, easily you can you can build this in in apex and um, and uh, that's that's basically what we're here to show you is is how great apex is and uh, if you do need help with it uh, we are the apex experts so I want to thank everyone for uh, for the questions and thank you for attending and um, please be with us uh, on our next webinar which will be uh, coming up this August uh, 8th with Adrian Ping, and that's on blockchain technology in case uh, this technology interests you. Um, it may be part of your life, whether you want it or not, in the next five years. We'll see. Um, oh, I think I got another question here. Um, I'm through answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, come on, Monty. Don't okay, here. Here's a, here's a comment from Doug Galt, and he says, uh, it might be worth reiterating that this can be over any data, including data that already people are, uh, that they already have in their database. That's uh, correct. It is, it is uh, worth repeating, and it's not just uh, Oracle data sources as well. Um, Oracle has uh, something, we kind of glossed over it earlier, but even non-Oracle data sources, uh, if, if you have your information in text files, and you can lay something called an external view uh, or an external table uh, definition over that. Those can source these visualizations as well. So it doesn't have to be an Oracle uh, uh, star schema or anything like that. Uh, you've got tremendous flexibility and it's very, very powerful. So thanks, Doug, for, uh, for uh, mentioning that. 
it's uh, it's your data where your data lives really because if you remember the analytic view doesn't doesn't hold the data itself it just references the data and I, I just wanted to mention too uh, it's very important that if you have further questions that you you'd like to know more about this and how in in some can help you uh, you can contact Monty um, at uh, M. Latiole at insum.ca, and he'll be uh, ready to answer your questions and uh, take you down the road to uh, to show you what Apex can do. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, even though this this app is not this app that we demonstrate today is not publicly available, uh, we would love to be able to uh, create something uh, uh, in this uh, vein for you. Uh, for your company. Uh, your customers will love it. You'll get the BI insight that you've been uh, lacking at a cost you will love. So look forward to hearing from you. Got one last question here, uh, Monty, and it's, is this map using Oracle Jet? That's from Ryan. Yes. Uh, that is correct. Absolutely. That is correct. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, okay. Shout out to the audience here. Any any other questions? This is your last chance to uh, throw in your questions. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. We've uh, no other questions and. Um, Thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and um, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.